I'm a nurse, and I currently work the night shift at the local psych ward. I've been working here for about five years, and trust me when I say I've seen it all. I've dealt with shit thrown on walls, being bitten by a patient, attempted suicides, you name it, I've seen it. Well, or well, so I thought. Brian changed that. Hey Sam, guess who's back? Sean asked me as he was scribbling some notes in a patient's chart. Who? It was hard to play the guessing game when we constantly saw the same repeat patients. We always joked about how perfectly suiting it was that our front door was literally a revolving door. Big Brian, Sean smirked as he answered, because he knew how creeped out I got around Brian. Again, I've seen it all, so most patients don't creep me out. I've even helped treat murderers before, so it really takes a lot to make my skin crawl. Brian was 6 foot 4, 225 pounds with dark brown shaggy hair and black eyes. I always avoided making direct eye contact with him. Per our protocol, security always searches patients upon entry, whether voluntary or involuntary, and confiscate anything that could potentially be used as a weapon against someone else or themselves. Almost anything can be used as a weapon, so patients usually come in with just clothes. Even shoelaces aren't allowed, because they could try to hang themselves with it. Except for Big Brian, he always carries small crystals in a black velvet bag around his neck. They weren't very heavy, nor were they sharp, so security lets him keep them. Security always made him take the string out from the necklace, so by the time I saw him, he just had the bag of crystals shoved into one of his pockets. Brian never let those crystals out of his sight. He even showered with them. One of the new nurses tried to move the crystals and Brian got so enraged he threw his body out of bed, landing his right hand around her neck. She couldn't even scream for help. I'm not sure if it's because he held her neck so tightly or if she was just so petrified that she couldn't make a sound. Needless to say, she didn't last very long. Poor girl shook so bad after the attack, she could barely make it to the hospital across the street to get checked out, so Sean was nice enough to accompany her. He's always watching out for his co-workers and it wasn't too long before he became my best friend here. Which room is he in? I asked Sean, hoping to avoid Brian if possible. Six. It suits him, don't you think? Sean teased. Ugh. I rolled my eyes. Do you believe in Satan and the devil worship and shit he talks about? Sean shrugged, taking a handful of potato chips and shoving them into his mouth like he hadn't eaten all day. With how busy we were, he probably actually hadn't eaten all day. I don't know. I mean, I definitely don't not believe in it. You? No. I think there's enough evil in this world that any idea of a devil or Satan couldn't even come close to the quantity of evil we see. Sean stopped chewing. Damn Sam, that's cold. I jotted down a few notes on a chart. Yeah, well, my dad was a cop. He saw pure evil. Sean looked down, avoiding talking about my dead dad. He knew better than to continue that topic. He shoved more chips in his mouth. Is that the only thing you've eaten today? I asked. Yeah, you know how the full moon nights go, not a second to ourselves to piss or eat. Sean continues to devour half the family sized bag of chips and finally wiped his hands on his pants and asked, So, are you gonna end up in Big Brian's bag tonight? I physically shook the creepy thought off of me. That's the other thing with Brian. Whenever he got pissed off at a nurse, he would write our name down and shove it into his little velvet bag. Then, he would laugh. He always fucking laughed when he did it. He thought he could cast spells and curses on us by doing this. Even though I knew it was bullshit, his laugh alone creeped me out. I've had my name in the bag on more than one occasion. Sean likes to instigate, so he's had his name in the bag probably twice as much as I have. I glanced at the clock. 11.59. Almost instantaneously, with the clock striking midnight, shit hit the fan. Leave me the fuck alone. Brian roared as he flung his arms in the air, grasping at his little black velvet bag. Sean and I tried our best to grab his arms, but we needed backup. Finally, security came into the room and we all attempted to tackle Brian to his bed so that we could secure his wrist cuff to the bed and sedate him. Sean was able to pin Brian's right side against the bed with the help of security. I was pressing all of my body weight into Brian's left side when he suddenly stopped thrashing. He whipped his head around so fast and so hard I swear I felt wind against my cheek. He stared into my eyes and somehow his black eyes got darker. A wave of chills shot down my spine and I froze. What is he about to do? I stared, mesmerised. Brian slowly lowered his other half to his bed and as if a veil was lifted, he stopped screaming and slowly released a smile. I'm okay, I'm okay. Brian whispered. We were hesitant to release our grips. 
but after about a minute we finally released him and watched as he laid in his bed and quietly laughed to himself. He opened his little black velvet bag, pulled a piece of paper out from his pocket and placed it in the bag. His smile grew as he tilted his head and looked right at me. Before I could even ask, Brian said, Nurse yeah, Samantha, you're in my bag now. Brian shut his eyes, swung his head against his pillow and began reciting, Praise hail Satan, glory be Satan, the father of the earth, and to Lucifer, our guide and light, and to Belial, who walks between the worlds, and to Lilith, the queen of the night, as it was in the void of the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, Satan's kingdom without end, so it is done, Samantha is next. Brian eventually became compliant, and we left him in his room while we took a break. Sean lit a cigarette and held his pack towards me to offer me one. Yeah, it's been one of those nights. I'm not usually a smoker, but on rough nights I'll steal one of Sean's. You worried about that voodoo hex shit, Sean asked as he took a puff. No, I lied. The air felt dense the rest of the night. I felt a constant heaviness on my chest, and I just wanted to get home. When I was finally done, I went straight to bed and had the worst nightmare of my life. I dreamt that I was on a scene with my dad as he was chasing down a bank robber. I tried as hard as I could to catch up to them, but my legs weren't fast enough. I watched as my dad caught up to the bad guy, only to be shot straight through the skull and land on the pavement. I never could catch up to him. I woke up in a sweat and immediately took a cold shower. As I got out of the shower, my cat began hissing at the front door. Nobody was there, but this wasn't normal behaviour for her. I opened my front door and assured myself nobody was there. Lily, it's fine, nobody's here, I assured her. <laughs> I spun around just in time to see the dead bird fall from my window to the shrubs. What the hell? As if my morning wasn't creepy enough, my phone began ringing on full volume despite the fact that I always keep my phone on vibrate. Hello? I answered. There was nothing but static on the other end of the line. I held the phone away from my ear and checked the number. Private. Hello? I asked again. You. Static interrupted the voice. Mine. I dropped my phone to my couch and held my hand over my mouth. I rushed to get ready for work and threw on my scrubs before I could get into my car and head back to work. I saw all of the nurses huddled around the front desk, whispering which wasn't common. What's going on? I asked Sean. Brian escaped last night. How is that even possible? I nearly yelled. Nobody knows. I have never seen Sean look so uneasy. I started to walk towards Brian's room for some unknown reason and Sean grabbed my arm. You shouldn't go in there. Why? Just trust me. I swung my arm out of Sean's grasp and continued towards Brian's room. As soon as I turned the corner and stood in the doorway of his room, I froze. In bright red blood on the wall of his room read, You're mine, Samantha. I felt my head get light and I noticed the window wide open. I slowly walked up to the window and looked down the five stories to the ground. How did he escape? As I eased my body back from the window, I felt a breath against my neck. I closed my eyes and held my breath. A faint voice in the deepest tone I've ever heard whispered, Samantha. I spun around, but the room was empty. Thank you for watching today's video, if you like what you hear please like, subscribe and comment.